Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video has to do with characters in the Nancy Drew games. There are some we love, some we hate, some we love to hate, and then there are some that are just plain bad. In general, the Nancy Drew series is actually stellar when it comes to character development. Being point-and-click games, a great deal of the immersion comes from having characters that players can actually relate to and learn about. If a character can make me feel things, if they have an intriguing backstory, and if they have fully developed relationships with other characters, then I am truly and genuinely impressed. And honestly, this is the case for most of the Nancy Drew characters, which makes it all the more obvious when a character just doesn't measure up. Hence this video. I will be ranking the top 10 worst Nancy Drew characters across all 33 Nancy Drew main series games. A couple things to keep in mind. One, this is not a list of characters that I don't like. There are some characters that I just don't vibe with, but that are written quite well. Instead, this is a list of characters that I think are portrayed poorly. We'll get into the criteria in a second. Two, while I'm trying to be as objective as possible, I am only human, and my subjective opinions are likely to sneak into this ranking. These are just my personal thoughts. And three, this video will contain mild plot spoilers, and it will contain culprit spoilers for these following games. Again, this video will contain culprit spoilers for Secrets Can Kill Remastered, Secret of the Old Clock, Creature of Kapu Cave, Ransom of the Seven Ships, The Silent Spy, The Shattered Medallion, and Midnight in Salem. You have been warned. Now, in my opinion, a bad character exhibits the following three characteristics. One, they don't really add anything to the game. They feel superfluous and silly. Two, they don't have a backstory. They're a purely one-dimensional character with no interesting history. And three, they're frustrating to interact with. And not in a fun, I love to hate how annoying you are kind of way because you're supposed to be a jerk. Hi, Tino. But more in a, you are super annoying, but you're not supposed to be kind of way. To make this objective, I've identified 10 characters that I think meet these three criteria. Based on these three criteria, I will rank them in order from least worst to most worst so that you can definitively know which character sucks the most in the Nancy Drew series. To do so, each character will receive one to three stars on the suckometer for each category. Are they sapoof- are, are they sapoofuous? <laughs> Let's try that again. Are they superfluous? Are they bland? And are they annoying? On that fun note, let's begin, shall we? I'm going to be throwing a lot of shade during this video, but just know that all of my critiques come from a place of genuine love for these games. I lash out because I care. And again, one last warning, there will be culprit spoilers for these following games. Number 10, Jane Willoughby from Secret of the Old Clock. The prime reason that Jane ends up on this list is that she is an incredibly bland character. She earns three stars on the suckometer for having no backstory because, spoiler alert, she isn't Jane Willoughby. This doesn't really change things all that much because we don't learn much about real Jane in the first place. We basically know that real Jane was friends with Emily's mom, and that's it. We also know that she had an annoying roommate who likes to steal stuff. I wonder who that could be. What saves Jane somewhat and places her at the bottom of the worst characters list is the fact that she only deserves one star on the suckometer in the categories of superfluous and annoying. She's not really that annoying to interact with. Her voice isn't great, but I'm not tearing my hair out. She's also fairly important to the case in that she ends up being the culprit and allowing Nancy to participate in a good old fashioned car chase is always good. So she's pretty bad, but she's not the worst of the worst. Number nine, 
Detective Beach from Secrets Can Kill Remastered. This creepy looking dude earns a spot on this list for being as bland as a potato. His only character trait basically ends up being, find that journal. Which isn't so much a character trait as it is a constant and very annoying demand. As such, he earns three stars on the Succometer for being terribly boring, and two bonus stars for being annoying. Like, dude, talk about something. Anything else. If you mention the journal one more time, I might need to take that coffee cup of yours and dump it in your lap. In all seriousness, Detective Beach ends up being an out-of-place addition to the original Secrets Can Kill and serves no other purpose beyond making the remastered version different from the original game. He only gets one star in the Succometer in the superfluous category because he is actually needed at the end of the game as the culprit. And the fact that he pulls a gun on Nancy is something the games haven't explored since, which is at least more interesting than his performance in the rest of the game. Number 8, Ewan McLeod from The Silent Spy. <sighs> this guy. The primary reason that Ewan makes this list is that he receives three stars on the Succometer for being bland. Every time Nancy speaks to him, he gives her the world's most vague non-answers and reveals absolutely nothing about himself or Cathedral. He basically says that he's not allowed to divulge any details about himself, which, okay writers, that's awfully convenient. Nice little loophole to avoid writing any actually interesting content for this guy in his glaring shirt. He also earns two stars on the Succometer for being superfluous. The way that this game is written makes it super unimportant who the culprit is. And even when we learn that Ewan is technically the culprit, we also learn that his motivation is because I can. Excuse me? That's not a motive. That's just stupid. We could essentially remove Ewan from the game and the actual outcome of the game could still be about the same, which is problematic. He only gets one star in the annoying category because he's not technically a pain to interact with, but the poor writing of the silent spy and the lack of coherent focus really does this character dirty. Number 7, Millie Strathorn from Stay Tuned for Danger. I would again like to point out that this is not a list of characters that I hate, because I actually tended to enjoy Millie Strathorn. This is a list of characters who are poorly written, and unfortunately, Millie makes the cut. The biggest reason for this is that she ends up being utterly superfluous, earning three stars on the Succometer in that category. While Ewan at least has some relevance to the game, Millie could vanish out of the series canon and Stay Tuned for Danger would remain entirely unchanged. Adding a character in for no reason is a pretty lazy move. Her presence needs to be justified. Further solidifying her position on this list is the fact that Millie gets two stars on the Succometer for being bland. We learn things about her, none of which are really important. She likes to write bad fanfics. She doesn't like Rory Danner, Rick Arlen's soap opera character. And her family owns Worldwide Broadcasting Studios. Okay, cool. But not important enough to make her interesting. Millie only gets one star on the Succometer in the annoying category because while her voice is like sandpaper, at least she's consistently funny and charming and comes up with good riddles. Number six. Lena Patel from The Shattered Medallion. This is another character who essentially ends up on this list because the game is just done very poorly. Lena scores high on the Succometer in the superfluous category, earning a venerable three stars. Now one might argue that her boyfriend, Patrick Dowsett, is even more superfluous, and I totally hear that argument. Patrick nearly made this list as well. The only thing that saved Patrick is that, in this ridiculously stupid plot, Nancy actually kind of needs Patrick for his... his density? He's also much nicer, and we learn about him and his family, so he does have some backstory. Lena, on the other hand, could have never existed in the game, and it wouldn't have mattered. She's brought to the reality show for he, her decoding skills. But Nancy has literally been decoding things for 29 games before this. Why is there all of a sudden a code that she can't crack? Also, because the game show results are literally the same every single time no matter what you do, 
any actions that Lena takes during the game serve no actual point. She also gets two stars on the Seko meter for being bland because, like Ewan, she basically refuses to talk about her past. She tells a fun little anecdote about Sunny's grandfather, but that's it. It's not even about her. I give her one star in the Seko meter in the annoying category because she's technically not that bad to interact with, but the other grievances that I have are very real. Number 5. Johnny Roll from Ransom of the Seven Ships. <sighs> this guy. This guy is so problematic for so many reasons. First of all, spoiler alert, he's not Jamaican. He's a white guy pretending to be Jamaican, and then when Nancy finds out, he pretends to be Australian. But he's not Australian either, he's... Dwayne Powers? Whatever this guy's name is, he gets three stars in the Suckometer for being bland because the game presents no actual information about who he really is. He has no real backstory, and when the dramatic culprit reveal happens, you better hope that you've played this culprit's previous game before if you want to understand anything. And even if you have, you probably still won't understand anything because of how poorly this character is written. He also gets three stars on the Suckometer for being a tremendous pain in the keister, this game is already overflowing with frustrating puzzles, and several of them come from this dum-dum. He even brags to us at the end about how annoying he was and how many stupid, pointless, and aggravating puzzles he made us complete. The only thing that saves this character is that he earns only one star on the Seko meter in the superfluous category, because he is literally the only character in the game. Which is a problem in the game itself, but that's a whole other discussion. See my review if you want to dive down that rabbit hole. Number 4, Kiri Nind from The Shattered Medallion. The characters in Shattered Medallion are so bad that two of them made this list and one of them almost did. So, enter Kiri. Kiri's prime reason for placing so high on this list is the same as Lena's. She earns three stars on the Suckometer for being superfluous because no matter how you play the reality show, Kiri will never be a real competitor. She ends up being pointless in this respect, and she's an even more pointless suspect. I still, to this day, do not understand what betrayal she is talking about. Like, what is your deal, Kiri? What is your problem? This also feeds into the annoying category, where Kiri earns three shiny stars on the Sakometer. A big reason for this is because of her stupid culprit arc, but also because interactions with her are so weird. They're supposed to be clever, I guess, but they just end up sounding so over-the-top fake. I'm a greyhound. Fame is a cruel sport. But I have a need to run. Like, okay, weirdo. Kiri also earns two stars on the Suckometer for her backstory, which she word vomits to us in two sentences or less. She doesn't earn three stars because yes, she technically does have a backstory, but it's not fun to get the condensed version in forced conversation. Earlier games allowed us to slowly discover more about characters, but not this one. Number 3. Thanos Ganas from Labyrinth of Lies. Mr. Muscles earns a spot in the top three for several reasons. His first cardinal sin? He's entirely superfluous. He's only around to be the muscle for the real mastermind of the crime ring, which, let's be real, is the most disorganized mess of a ring that ever did ring. Because this game does the pretty unfortunate thing where everyone is technically the culprit, the characters really need to establish their importance to have any worth. And Thanos just doesn't. Real talk, I had to look up this beefy dude's last name because he's so forgettable that I couldn't remember it. He also gets three stars on the Sekometer for being bland. We know that he's apparently been involved in criminal activity as a heavy for some time, and we get constant vague references to him being very dangerous. Ooh, I'm so scared. No, I'm not, because we literally learn nothing interesting about you. You need to earn my fear, you big lummox, and you have not. Additionally, Thanos gets two more stars on the Sekometer for being annoying. Just like Kiri, his conversations are supposed to be deep, intense, and intimidating, when really, they're just kinda stupid. People don't growl, Thanos. That's weird. 
You're weird. Number two, Pua Mapu from Creature of Kapu Cave. Oh, Pua, how woefully unimportant you are to the entirety of this mystery. You may have guessed, but Pua earns three stars on the Suckometer for being completely superfluous. If Pua didn't exist, the game would essentially take the same course with a few minor rewrites. Basically, Pua is only important because she goes along with her father's scheme. But in all reality, it's his scheme, his money problems, and his deal. None of it actually involves Pua. She is also sort of the reason that the Hardy Boys are supposed to be on this case, but nothing comes of their investigation into her because her only crime is knowing what kind of bull honky her father was up to and not doing anything to stop it. She also earns three stars on the Sekometer for being boring. What do we know about Pua? She likes to surf. Anything else? No. Not really. Joe even gives her a perfect opportunity to elaborate on her personality. The script literally opens up to allow Pua to be interesting, and... I surf till it gets too dark, I come home, I eat, I go to bed, I get up, I surf till I gotta start teaching, I help my dad, that's it. That's my life. Lazy writing. Furthermore, Pua gets two additional stars on the Suckometer for being annoying. She just... is. She's constantly yelling at people, complaining, and only talks about surfing. Like, I get having a hobby that's basically your life. Hi, YouTube. But it's not the only thing that makes you you. Stop holding everything in, Pua, and just let us connect with you for once. And stop yelling at people. Ah. And number one, Judge Danforth from Midnight in Salem. For those of you that know me, you might be surprised that only one Midnight in Salem character made this list. Full disclosure, I'm surprised too. I considered all of them for this list, believe me, but ultimately came to the conclusion that most of the characters are relevant enough to the plot that I couldn't consider them superfluous. Most of them have enough backstory as well, I'm not saying it's good or interesting backstory, but it's technically there. But. Judge freaking Danforth. This lovely gentleman gets three stars on the Suckometer in all three categories, and don't worry, I will be fully telling you why. First, he's superfluous. Literally, Judge, why are you here? You know you're superfluous when you don't even have a first name. I scoured. He doesn't have a name. That's how irrelevant he is. His only job in the mystery is so that we have someone to rant the results of the case at, which we could have just done to the culprit, by the way. Not important. Second, he's bland. Again, he doesn't even have a name, he never leaves his office, and we know nothing about him except that he's a judge. He has no personality beyond that and no purpose or presence in the mystery. Third, he's annoying. Never before have I met someone so incompetent that they lock themselves in their own office. How? How did you even do that? And why? He's seriously a dunderhead who leaves important codes and sticky notes, stands like a buffoon, and flails his hands around like he's being attacked by bees. He looks and acts ridiculous, and I have no patience for his nonsense. Worst character in the Nancy Drew series, hands down. <sighs> okay, wizard kitten. Deep breaths. There you have it, fellow detectives. My definitive list of the top 10 worst characters in the Nancy Drew series. I'll say it again, I want to reiterate it so that you know. I make fun of these games and their imperfections because I genuinely care about them and I adore everything about them. The vast, vast majority of characters in these games are incredible, and I do plan on doing a 10 best characters in the near future. If that's something that you would like to see, please hit the like button to let me know and leave me a comment telling me what you thought of this video. Do you agree with my assessment? Are there any other characters that you would add to this list? I love discussing these games with you all, so let me know your thoughts. Finally, I would love it if you would like to subscribe and hit that notification bell to join our little Nancy Drew family and become a fellow detective. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.